Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today is Wednesday, May 2nd, 2018. Today I'm going to recap last night's NBA playoff action, look ahead to tonight's NBA playoff action, look back at last night's Stanley Cup playoff action, look ahead to tonight's Stanley Cup playoff action, look back on Major League Baseball games from last night, look ahead to today's games, and do the 2014 NBA redraft. All right. NBA playoffs. In what was a classic of a game, the Cavaliers defeated the Raptors 113-112 in overtime. The Cavs have a 1-0 series lead. LeBron James, easily the best player on the court, with another triple-double. 26 points, 13 assists, 11 rebounds in the win. DeMar DeRozan, 22 points of defeat. Jonas Valanciunas was good in this game as well for Toronto. The Warriors defeated the Pelicans 121-116 to take a 2-0 series lead. Steph Curry is back. Kevin Durant had 29 points in the win. Anthony Davis had 25 points in the feet. Draymond Green almost had a triple-double in this game. Tonight you have the Jazz at the Rockets, 8 o'clock TNT. It's the lone playoff game that's on tonight. Don't think Ricky Rubio will be back for this. The Rockets are just good at home, and they'll win yet again thanks to another brilliant game by James Harden. Let's say... I think Utah hangs around in this game. Let's go with 110-103 as your final score. Stanley Cup playoffs last night. The Capitals defeated the Penguins 4-3 to take a 2-1 series lead. No scoring in the first period, but in the second period, John Carlson, second of the playoffs on the power play, assisted by Nicholas Backstrom and Alex Ovechkin, one of the Caps. Jacob Snetzel's eighth of the playoffs, assisted by Justin Schultz and Sidney Crosby, ties it up at one apiece. Patrick Hornquist's fourth of the playoffs on the power play, assisted by Evgeny Malkin and Phil Kessel, 2-1 Penguins. Chandler Stevenson, second of the playoffs, assisted by TJ Oshie and Nicholas Backstrom, 2-2 game. Sidney Crosby's eighth of the playoffs, assisted by Jacob Netzel and Chris Letang, 3-2 Penguins, third period. Matt Niskanen's first of the playoffs, assisted by Dmitry Orlov and Tom Wilson, 3-3 game. And the game-winning goal, with a minute, 7 to go, Alex Ovechkin, his eighth of the playoffs, assisted by Nicholas Backstrom, 4-3 Capitals was your final. Braden Holtby was really, really good in this game. 19 saves on 22 shots, so not as good as numbers as I thought. Matt Murray was mediocre. 18 saves on 22 shots. This was an impressive win for the Winnipeg Jets. After being down 3 nothing in this game, they scored three goals in a span of three minutes to tie it up. And they eventually win this game 7-4 as they take a 2-1 series lead. It was all Predators in the first period. Mike Fisher's first of the playoffs, assisted by Ryan Hartman and Matthias Elcombe, one nothing Preds. P.K. Subban, second of the playoffs on a power play, assisted by Philip Forsberg and Ryan Johansson, 2 nothing Predators. Austin Watson's fifth of the playoffs, assisted by Matthias Elcombe, 3 nothing Preds. Second period, here come the Jets. Paul Stasny's third of the playoffs, assisted by Jacob Truba, makes it 3-1. Dustin Bufflin's second of the playoffs, assisted by Brian Little and Tyler Myers, makes it a 3-2 game. Jacob Truba's second of the playoffs, assisted by Blake Wheeler and Paul Stasny, makes it 3-3. Dustin Bufflin's second of the game, third of the playoffs, assisted by Patrick Lane and Paul Stasny, gives the Jets a 4-3 lead. Third period, Nashville ties it up at four apiece on a power play goal by Philip Forsberg, his fifth of the playoffs, assisted by Ryan Johansson and P.K. Subban. Blake Wheeler gives the Jets a lead. On his second goal of the playoffs on the power play, assisted by Mark Sheffley and Dustin Bufflin. Blake Wheeler's third of the playoffs, assisted by Mark Sheffley, makes it a 6-4 game. And the dagger, Brandon Tenev, his fourth of the playoffs, into the empty United, assisted by Adam Lowry. 7-4 was your final. Again, I can't say it enough. What an impressive win for the Winnipeg Jets. Connor Hellebuck kept the Jets in that game, even though he struggled early. 26 saves on 30 shots. Pekka Rene, 38 saves on 43 shots. Those last two goals were empty net goals. Tonight you have Game 3 between the Bruins and the Lightning from TD Garden in Boston. This should be a very interesting game. 7 o'clock, NBCSN. Kenny Albert and Pierre Maguire on the call. I think the Bruins take a 2-1 series lead. They're home. I think David Pasternak will be the star of the game. Let's say 4-3 Bruins in regulation. So there you go. And your second game, 10 o'clock, NBCSN. What has been perhaps the best second-round series so far, even though that first game was a blowout, the Golden Knights and the Sharks. 
John Forslund, Joe Micheletti will be on the call for this one. Vegas has a 2-1 series lead right now, so it's game four. Give me the Sharks to even up the series at two apiece. I picked the Golden Knights to win the series in seven games. So give me the Sharks. I think this is going to be another overtime game. Give me 5-4 San Jose in overtime. So there's that. Major League Baseball last night. Some very interesting results I want to get to you guys. The Rangers defeat the Indians 8-6 to six in 12 innings. As they improve the 12-19, Cleveland drops to 15-13. and 13. Alex Claudio with the win. Nick Goody with the loss. Top of the fifth. Home run, Delano DeShields. 1-0 Rangers. Followed by an RBI double by Jerks and Profar. 2-0 Rangers. Top of the seventh. Two-run double, Jerks and Profar. 4-0 Rangers. Also in the top of the seventh, two-run home run, Nomar Maraza, 6-0 Rangers. Bottom of the seventh, two-run double, Jason Kipp, this makes it 6-2. And in the bottom of the ninth, on an 0-2 count with two outs, game-tying grand slam, Michael Brantley, 6-6. Top of the twelfth, go-ahead home run, Joey Gallo makes it 7-6, followed by... Another home run by Isaiah Kinnear Falefa to make it 8-6, and that was your final. I think the Rangers were lucky they won this game. They probably should have lost, considering that Brantley had that grand slam. Doug Fister, 6 and 2 thirds inning, 6 hits, no one runs, 2 walks, and 4 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 2.88 ERA. Mike Clevenger was okay, 6 and 2 third inning, 7 hits, 3 earned runs, a walk, and 7 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 2.82 ERA. The Nationals defeat the Pirates 12 to 4 as they improve to 14 and 16. Pittsburgh drops to 17 and 13. Max Scherzer with the win, Chad Cole with the loss. Bottom of the third, home run, Wilbur Dyfo, 1 0 Nats. Bottom of the fourth, home run, Matt Adams, 2 0 Nats. Bottom of the fifth, three run home run, Bryce Harper, 5 0 Nats. Home run, Matt Adams, the second of the game, 6 0 Nationals. Bottom of the sixth, RBI single, Max Scherzer, 7 0 Nats. Also in the bottom of the sixth, the three run double, Trey Turner. 10 nothing Nats. RBI single, Matt Adams, 11 nothing Nats. RBI single, Jordan Zimmerman, 12 nothing Nats. Top of the seventh, a garbage home run. Corey Dickerson makes it 12 to 2. And another garbage home run in the top of the ninth by Max Moroff to make it a 12 4 final. Max Scherzer was brilliant again. Six in the third innings, three hits, two runs, two walks, and eight strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 1.79 ERA. Chad Cole, four and two thirds innings, four hits, four and runs, two walks, and three strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 5.01 ERA. Something interesting the Nationals did in this game was hitting Bryce Harper in the leadoff spot. They moved him there because he wasn't seeing good pitches and he was walking a lot. So, smart move by Dave Martinez to put him in the leadoff spot. The Royals feed the Red Sox 7 to 6 in 13 innings as the Royals improved to 8 and 21. Boston drops to 21 and 8. Calvin Herrero with the win. Brian Johnson with the loss. Brian Flynn with the save. Top of the fourth, sacrifice fly it. Alcides Escobar, one off in Royals. Top of the sixth. John Jay scores as Alcides Escobar got caught stealing to make it 2 nothing Royals. Bottom of the sixth, home run Mitch Moreland makes it 2 1. RBI single, Jackie Bradley Jr. makes it 2 2. Bottom of the seventh, Andrew Benatendi. Scored on the wild pitch, 3-2 Red Sox. Top of the ninth, Alex Gordon hits the game-tying home run off of Craig Kimbrell to make it a 3-3 game. Top of the 12th, sacrifice by John Jay makes it 4-3. Bottom of the 12th, home run Eduardo Nunez ties it up at four apiece. Top of the 13th, a three-run home run by Jorge Soler, who's been great for Kansas City this season. 7-4 Royals. Bottom of the 13th. RBI ground out, Jackie Bradley Jr. makes it 7-5. RBI single, Christian Vasquez makes it 7-6 final. Jacob Junis, 6 innings, 7 hits, 2 runs, a walk and 5 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 3.290 array. Chris Sale, 7 innings, 5 hits, 1 run, 2 walks, and 6 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 2.14 ERA. The Tigers defeat the Rays 2-1 as they improve to 12-16. Tampa drops to 13-15. Matthew Boyd with the win, Chris Archer with the loss, Shane Green with the save. Bottom of the third, RBI double, Nick Castellanos, one off in Tigers. Top of the fifth, Fielder's Choice, Matt Duffy, 1-1 one, one game. Bottom of the fifth, RBI double, Leonis Martin, 
two on Tigers as your final. Matthew Boyd had a good game. Six innings, seven hits, one earned run, one walk, and seven strikeouts leaves to give him the 2.48. The array, Chris Archer, six innings, six hits, two earned runs, a walk, and six strikeouts leaves with the ERA of 6.05. The Brewers defeat the Reds 7 to 6 as they improve the 18 and 13. Cincinnati drops to 7 and 23. Chase Anderson with the win, Homer Bailey with the loss, Jared Jeffries with the save. Top of the first, two run home run, Travis Shaw, 2 0 Brewers. Home run, Jesus Aguilar, 3 0 Brewers. Bottom of the first, RBI single, Joey Votto makes it 3 1. Also in the bottom of the first, two run home run, Eugenio Suarez, 3 3. Top of the fifth, two run single, Ryan Braun makes it 5 3. Top of the sixth, RBI triple, Johnson VR makes it 6 3. Bottom of the sixth, RBI single, Billy Hamilton makes it 6. Top of the seventh, home run, Hernan Perez makes it a 7 4 Brewers lead. Bottom of the seventh, sacrifice by Eugenio Suarez makes it 7 5. Bottom of the eighth, home run by Alex Splendino makes it 7 6. That was your final. Chase Anderson, five and a third inning, six hits, four and runs, four walks, and four strikeouts, leads the game with a 3.38 ERA. Homer Bailey, five inning, six hits, five earned runs, a walk, and a strikeout, leaves the game with a 4.81 ERA. The Braves defeat the Mets 3 to 2 as they improve to 17 and 11. The Mets drop to 17 and 10. Mike Sirocco with the win in his big league debut, Noah Syndergaard with the loss, and Arodis Viciano with the save. Top of the first, two-run double, Freddie Freeman, 2 nothing Braves, followed by an RBI single by Nick Marcakis, 3 nothing Braves. Bottom of the sixth, home run, Yohan Cespedes makes it a 3-1 game. Bottom of the ninth, RBI ground out, Wilmer Flores makes it 3-2. Now is your final. Mike Sirocco was brilliant in his big league debut. Six innings, six hits, one earned run, a walk, and five strikeouts leaves the game with a 1.5 ERA. Noah Syndergaard, six innings, ten hits, three earned runs, a walk, and three strikeouts leaves the game with a 3.1. ERA. The Marlins defeat the Phillies 2 to 1 in 10 innings as they improve to 11 and 18. Philly drops to 16 and 13. Janisi Tozawa with the win. Yaskel Rios with the loss. Top of the fifth, RBI double Reese Hoskins 1 0 Phillies. Bottom of the sixth, home run Justin Bohr makes it 1 1. Bottom of the tenth, walk off RBI single Yadiel Rivera to give the Marlins a 2 1 win. Arlene Garcia, six innings, five hits, and earned run, a walk, and three strikeouts, leaves the game with a 1.09 ERA. Zach Eflin, six innings, three hits, and earned run, no walks, and four strikeouts, leaves the game with a 1.5 ERA. The Rockies defeat the Cubs 3-1 as they improve to 16-15. and The Cubs drop to 16-11. and John Gray with the win. Kyle Hendricks with the loss. Wade Davis with the save. Top of the first home run, Charlie Blackman, 1-0 Rockies. David Dahl home run, 2-0 Rockies. Bottom of the first home run, Anthony Rizzo makes it a 2-1 game. Top of the fourth home run, Nolan Arenado. Three run Rockies was your final. John Gray, seven innings, three hits, and earned run a walk, and six strikeouts leaves the game with a 4.99 ERA. So that was his best start of the year. Cal Hendricks, seven and two thirds innings, four hits, three and runs, two walks, and five strikeouts leaves the game with a 3.19 ERA. The Yankees defeat the Astros 4 0 as they improve to 19 10. Houston drops to 20 11. David Robertson with the win, Ken Giles with the loss. This was a scoreless game going into the top of the ninth. A.J. Hinch makes a poor decision to let Ken Giles pitch to Gary Sanchez as Sanchez hits a three-run home run to give the Yankees a 3-0 lead. Then Will Harris throws a wild pitch as Aaron Hicks scores from third base. 4-0 Yankees was your final. Jordan Montgomery had to leave the game early due to elbow tightness. That's not good news for the Yankees. He's going back to New York to see doctors. He might require jo Tommy John surgery, and that's the case. That's a big loss for the Yankees, as they're going to have to go out and upgrade that rotation at the trade deadline. He was brilliant in that first inning before he left. And only threw seven pitches, left the game with a 3.62 ERA. Domingo Herman in relief was just brilliant. Four innings, four hits, a walk, and four strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 3.77 ERA. If I had to make a guess of who... Fills in for Montgomery for now. It has to be Herman because he was just excellent in yesterday's game. And he was really good Thursday afternoon, pitching a couple innings in relief in that game against the Twins in a game where the Yankees won on a, the walk-off homer by Gary Sanchez. The Blue Jays defeat the Twins 7-4 in 10 innings as they improve to 17-12. and 12. Minnesota drops to 9-16. and 16. 
Tyler Clifford with the win. John Curtis with the loss and Roberto Osuna with the save. Bottom of the first home run, Joe Mauer, one nothing Twins. RBI double, Eddie Rosario, 2 nothing Twins. Top of the fifth, home run, Kendris Morales gets the Blue Jays on the board, makes it a 2-1 game. RBI single, Justin Smoke makes it 2-2. Top of the sixth, home run, Kendris Morales, his second of the game, gives the Blue Jays a 3-2 lead. Bottom of the sixth, two-run home run, Eddie Rosario makes it 4-3 Twins. Top of the eighth, sacrifice by Kevin Pillar makes it 4-4. Top of the 10th, Kevin Pillar scores on the wild pitch, makes it 5-4. 6-4 Blue Jays on an infield single by Azlemi Diaz. And 7-4 Blue Jays on another wild pitch that scored in Luke Maley. Marco Estrada, 5 innings, 7 hits, 4 and runs a walk and 3 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 6.19 ERA. Kyle Gibson, 5 innings, 5 hits, 2 and runs, 2 walks and 6 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 3.38 ERA. The Cardinals defeat the White Sox 3-2 as they improve to 16-12. Chicago drops to 8-19. Bud Norris with the win, walking surreal with the loss. Bottom of the first home run, Tommy Pham, 1-0 Cardinals. Top of the fourth, two-run double, Yon Moncada, 2-1 White Sox. Bottom of the ninth, game-tying home run, Matt Carpenter, 2-2. Also in the bottom of the ninth, the walk-off single by Yadier Molina gives the Cardinals a 3-2 win. Michael Walk of five innings, five hits, two run runs, three walks, and three strikeouts leaves the game with a 3.62 ERA. James Field, six innings, two hits, and earned run and four strikeouts leaves the game with a 5.35 ERA. So that was his best start of the season. Diamondbacks feed the Dodgers 4 to 3 as they improve to 21 and 8. The Dodgers drop to 12 and 17. Silvino, Brock Go with the win. Adam Libator with the loss, and Brad Broxberger with the save. Bottom of the second, home run A.J. Pollock, 1-0 Diamondbacks. Top of the third, two-run home run Cody Ballinger, 2-1 Dodgers. Top of the fourth, RBI ground out Max Muncy, 3-1 Dodgers. Bottom of the fifth, home run Christian Walker to get the Diamondbacks within one. Bottom of the seventh, RBI triple, two-run triple by Danny Descalco to give the Diamondbacks a 4-3 lead. Matt Koch, five innings, four hits. Two earned runs, three walks, and three strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 2.370 array. Clayton Kershaw, six innings, six hits, two earned runs, a walk, and six strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 2.86 ERA. The Angels defeat the Orioles 3-2 as they improve to 17-12. Baltimore drops to 8-21. Cam Betterosian with the win. Brad Brock with the loss. Bottom of the sixth. RBI double and Dalton Simmons, 1-0 Angels. Home run, Luis Valbuena, 2 0 Angels. Top of the ninth, RBI double, Manny Machado gets the Orioles on the board to make it a 2 1 game. Then Adam Jones, RBI single, ties it up into his piece. Bottom of the ninth, walk off single with the bases loaded for Justin Upton gives the Angels a 3 2 win. Nick Trapiano, 6 and a third innings, 1 hit, no earned runs, 2 walks, and 5 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 3.42 ERA. Alex Cobb, 6 innings, 7 hits, 2 earned runs, 2 walks, and 2 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 9.68 ERA. So his best start of the early season. Mariners feed the Athletics 6 to 3 as they improve to 17 and 11. Oakland drops to 14 and 15. Felix Hernandez with the win, Andrew Tricks with the loss, Edwin Diaz with the save. Top of the first, home run, Jed Lowry, 1 0 in Oakland. Bottom of the second, RBI double Mike Cezino makes it 1-1. Bottom of the fifth, three-run home run, Nelson Cruz, 4-1 Mariners. Bottom of the sixth, Gene Segura, sacrifice 5-5-1 Mariners. Top of the seventh, infield single, Mark Canna makes it a 5-2 game. RBI ground out, Chad Pinder makes it 5-3. Bottom of the eighth, RBI ground out, Gene Segura, 6-3 Mariners. That was your final. Felix Hernandez, six innings, three hits, three runs, four walks, and seven strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 4.89 ERA. Andrew Triggs, four and two-thirds inning, six hits, four and runs, three walks, and four strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 5.2 ERA. Last but not least, the Padres via the Giants 3-2 to two as they improve to 11-20. and 20. San Francisco drops to 15-15. and 15. Kirby Yates with the win. Hunter Strickland with the loss. Brad Hand with the save. Top of the first, home run Christian Villanueva, 1-0 Padres. Top of the fourth, RBI ground out Jose Perella, 2-0 Padres. Bottom of the fifth, RBI single Andrew McCutcheon makes a 2-1. Bottom of the seventh, RBI double Buster Posey, 2-2. Top of the ninth, home run, Eric Cosmer, 3-2, was your final. Tyson Ross, six innings, four hits, and earned run, three walks, and nine strikeouts, leaves the game with a 3.280, all right? Andrew Suarez, seven innings, four hits, two earned runs, a walk, and five strikeouts, leaves the game with a 4.38 ERA. Today's games, 
couple matinee games today. Royals at the Red Sox. Danny Duffy and Drew Pomeranz. Rangers Indians. Matt Moore and Corey Kluber. Rays Tigers. Blake Snell and Michael Fulmer. Blue Jays Twins. Marcus Stroman and Fernando Romero. Romero's making his big league debut for the Twins today. White Sox Cardinals. Lucas Giolito and Carlos Martinez. Rockies Cubs. Tyler Anderson and New Darvish. Padres Giants. Clayton Richard and Derek Holland. To the night games, Pirates Nationals. Ivanova and Steven Strasburg. Brewers Reds. Wade Miley making a season debut against Luis Castillo. Braves Mets. Sean Newcomb and Jacob deGrom. Phillies Marlins. Aaron Nola and Jose Urena. Yankees Astros. Luis Severino and Dallas Keuchel. This is an ESPN game, so I'm going to pick it. Luis Severino has been good this year. Dallas Keuchel hasn't really been that good this year. So give me the Yankees to take their second straight win, which would be their 11th win in their last 12 games. So give me the Yankees 5-3 as they'll at least come away with the split in this four-game set in Houston. Dodgers, Diamondbacks, Hajin Ryu and Zach Godley, Orioles, Angels, Dylan Bundy and Andrew Heaney, Athletics, Mariners, you have Brett Anderson making his season debut against James Paxton. So it should be a fun night in the majors. Last time I'm going to do my NBA redraft from 2014. This is very interesting. A lot of these players are stars now, and some of these players that were picked were busts, and others are just role players. One, Cleveland Cavaliers, Joel Embiid. Oh, my goodness. If they had Embiid, maybe LeBron doesn't come back, or does he come back? Maybe he comes back a little bit later in his career because Embiid would have had to miss a couple years in theory. But LeBron and Joel Embiid playing together would have been something. And maybe Kyrie Irving doesn't get traded if that were the case. And maybe the Cavaliers don't trade for Kevin Love if that's the case. So there's a lot of history surrounding why the Cavaliers passed up on Joel Embiid. Two Milwaukee Bucks, Nikola Jokic. Oh my goodness, could you imagine Giannis playing with Nikola Jokic? That would have been something. Sixers, Julius Randle, they take Randle with Joel Embiid off the board. Randle's turned into a great all-around player. I'm interested to see if the Lakers keep him around long-term. He took a couple years to pan out, but he had his breakthrough this past season. And he looks like a keeper in the league. It's to be determined if the Lakers are his long-term future or not. For Orlando Magic, Aaron Gordon, no do over here as the Magic take their guy in Gordon. Gordon had a breakthrough year this year. He missed some time due to injury. Who knows, maybe if he doesn't get hurt, we could have snuck into that all-star team, especially after Kristaps Porzingis got hurt. So the Magic keep Gordon. But is it? do they keep him long-term or do they... Get rid of him this summer. Should be interesting to see what they do. Five Utah Jazz, Dario Saric. The Jazz do over their pick and take Dario Saric, who would have fit nicely with Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. That would be a nice little threesome there in Utah. Six Boston Celtics, Clint Capella. Capella's emerged as one of the more underrated centers in the NBA. He gets overlooked because he's on the same team as James Harden and Chris Paul. He's emerged as a good two-way center, and could you imagine him playing alongside Al Horford in that front court in Boston, as in theory here, Horford will be a power forward full-time if this were the scenario. Seven, Andrew Wiggins to the Lakers. Wiggins drops a seven. Wiggins isn't the franchise player that many people thought him out to be when he first came out into the draft. He's a nice player, but he's not a franchise player. Eight, Kings, Marcus Smart. The Kings take Smart here to be their point guard of the future. Nine, Charlotte Hornets, Jabari Parker. The Hornets take a chance with Parker here, who hasn't really panned out either. 
Injuries have a lot to do with that. He was supposed to be a star, but maybe a change of scenery would help Parker a little bit, as I expect the Bucks to move on for him this summer. Ten Orlando Magic, Alfred Payton, no do over here as they take Payton. Payton they eventually traded away, but after they traded him away, he actually turned out to be a good piece for the Suns. I'm interested to see if Phoenix does with him going forward. 11, Chicago Bulls, Yersef Nurkic. The Bulls take Nurkic here to be a serviceable center for them. Yurkic had a disappointing year at the Blazers this past season after being traded. He was just brilliant for them at the end of last season. Number 12, 76ers, Gary Harris. The Sixers take Harris here to go with their core. He'd be a nice wing man for them that could shoot threes and play a little D. 13, Tim Rolfs, TJ Warren. Warren is just really good. I think he's one of the more underrated players from this draft. He can score. He can do a lot. He can rebound. He so not a terrible passer either. That was a good selection by the Suns at 14. And with Warren off the board, they take Zach Levine, who the Timberwolves took 13. And I like Levine. He showed a lot of good things after he came back from an injury with the Bulls. I'm very interested to see... What the Bulls do with Levine this summer. 15, Hawks, Rodney Hood. Hood's been disappointing this season for the Cavs after the Jazz traded him away there. If And if the Cavs are to make a run, Rodney Hood has to turn back into the player that he was on the Jazz a couple years ago. 16, Nuggets, Bogdan Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich would have fit nicely on the wing there in Denver. 16 Celtics, Spencer Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie would be a nice guard off the bench for the Celtics. 18 Suns, Kyle Anderson. Anderson's been a nice role player on San Antonio. He'd fit nicely on the wing in Phoenix. 19 Denver, Jordan Clarkson. A good energy guy off the bench. 20 Raptors, Tyler Johnson. Johnson's been good the last couple years with the Miami Heat. And he'd be in the nice third guard off the bench for the Raptors. 21 Thunder, Joe Harris. Harris is one of the more improved players in the league. He had a nice year at Brooklyn, and he'd be a good bench piece for Oklahoma City. 22 Grizzlies, Glenn Robinson. Robinson's been okay for the Pacers since being drafted. Solid role player. Maybe he'd start on the Grizzlies, considering how bad the roster is. 23 Utah Jazz, Shabazz Napier. Solid backup point guard for the Blazers this past season. And... He'd be a nice backup on the Jazz as well. 24 Heat, Jeremy Grant. Grant's one of the more underrated role players in the league. He helped Oklahoma City this past season. Would be a nice guy off the bench for the Heat as well. 25 Rockets, Cristiano Felicio. He's a nice player. He's had some moments with the Bulls the last couple of years. He'd be a good guy off the bench for Houston. 26 Hornets, Langston Galloway. I can't believe this guy wasn't drafted in the second round, at least. I remember him as a rookie on the Knicks, on that bad Knicks team that won 17 games before they drafted Chris Apps Porzingis. And then he spent another season on the Knicks as well. He's a good three-point shooter. Then New Orleans signed him for a year, and then now he's on the Pistons. and He would be a nice fit off the bench in Charlotte, too. 27, Suns, Noah Vonley. Vonley didn't pan out what the Hornets thought. The Suns take a chance here with Von Ley to be a backup big off the bench. 28 Clippers, Sean Kilpatrick. Kilpatrick was solid with the Nets. I believe it was in the 2016-17 season. He bounced around this past season. He was on the Bulls, I believe, this year. I believe he was on Philly. And Kilpatrick would have been a nice role guy for the Clippers. 29 Thunder, Tyler Ennis. Ennis was a nice role player on the Lakers this past season. Be a good player off the bench for Oklahoma City. 30 Spurs. Doug McDermott. McDermott was traded from the Thunder to the Knicks in the Carmelo Anthony deal, then traded to Dallas as the Knicks took a chance with Emmanuel Moutier. And that was a three way deal. Then McDermott went to Dallas, and Devin Harris went to Denver, and Emmanuel Moutier went to New York. 
And McDermott would be like that classic Spurs guy. Knowing the Spurs and how they are with role players, he would have become like this generation Steve Kerr. That's it for my 2014 NBA redraft. That's it for today's podcast. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything. I hope you guys have a great day, everybody.